Hi, this is Dr. Eckhart. I'm a medical doctor, MD, from Women's Therapeutic Institute, Natural Progesterone Progestel. And the title of this presentation is, Why Didn't the Progesterone Work? Hint, it's not the progesterone. Progesterone interacts with other stuff you put on the skin. Anything you put on the skin is 10 times the potency than what you eat. And patients are extremely sensitive to small amounts of hormones. Hormones are, can be active chemicals or herbs, collectively known as xenoestrogens. Hormones, again, are chemical messengers. So this is a real patient. Maybe you can use this example. She called me up and said she has 10 years of migraines. And so my question was, does the migraines vary with the cycle? And she said, yes. So I said, well, let's see what we can do. Obviously, if they vary with the cycle, there's a hormonal component. Just use only the purple sheet, products on the purple sheet without the xenoestrogens. Those are safe products. It comes with a product. And maybe use a little progesterone. So she did that, and for six months, she has no more migraines. She only used progesterone for the first two months, and for the next four months, she just lived a clean life. At the end of six months, she told me, hey, my headaches are coming back. I'm getting bloating. My breast tenderness is, is getting a little bit worse, you know. And to boot, I've got a 9 out of 10 pain right near my lower right quadrant, right near the appendix. So what do you think I told her? I said, yes, you changed something. And she goes, no, I didn't. I'm following everything you told me to do. I'm using only the safe products on the purple sheet. I didn't change anything. I said, yes, you did. So you have a whole hour-long discussion on, yes, you did, no, I didn't. I can't. F I go through all the things on her skin, her shampoo, her laundry, lotions, cosmetics. I cannot find out where it's coming from. So I hang up, and she's double over in pain. She's got a 9 out of 10 pain. So she goes to see her OBGYN, do a CAT scan, an MRI, ultrasound. OBGYN cannot find anything, nothing. So again, after these tests, she calls me up again, and she goes, what's going on? I said, you changed something. She goes, no, I didn't. I said, yes, you did. So again, I go through all her things. I take another half an hour, can't find anything. I hang up, another week passes by, she calls me up on a Saturday. She goes, Doc, I think I know what it is. It's this chapstick. It, I said, did you use the chapstick? And that's when all these, these symptoms started. She goes, yes. I use this chapstick three times a week and it contains cannabis oil. Well, I said cannabis is marijuana, okay? And uh, marijuana, they took the marijuana smoke condensate, they found seven different chemicals that mimic estrogen. Again, these estrogens do not appear in the hormone test, okay? And also, women who smoke marijuana, who have smoked marijuana, who have a low BMI or very thin women, okay, they have a higher incidence of ovarian cysts. Okay, if you have a fat woman, the, the subcutaneous fat will just soak up all the marijuana, and of course, your body what doesn't get it, and you don't get the ovarian cyst. So, she stopped the chapstick, and by Thursday, okay, she calls me up again and says, my headaches are less, my bloating is less, and the pain that used to be 9 out of 10 is now a 3 out of 10 in the lower right quadrant. She goes, but I really don't believe you. I'm really quite skeptical. I only use this chapstick three times a week, and it's only on my lips. I really don't believe you. So what do you think I told her? I said, well, if you don't believe me, why don't you try and use the chapstick again? And she says, quote, hell no, I'm not going to do that again, unquote. So what's going on here? And uh, I just had the same experience she did 10 years earlier. This one patient calls me up and she goes, Doc, you know, I use this mascara and it's making me bloat and have breast tenderness. I said, lady, you're crazy. This is on a Monday. I said, it's only mascara. It's only on your eyelashes. It's a small, minute a quantity of, of, of chemical. How could it possibly make you bloat and have breast tenderness? Okay? So I hang up. I go, crazy lady, you know. And then Friday on the same week, a second lady calls me and goes, Doc, I just wanted to let you know, I use this mascara, and it's making me bloat and have breast tenderness. I'm like, really? And then two months later, a third different lady calls me up and says, Doc, this mascara is making you bloat. So I began to ask the question, well, what is going on? You know, why is it like this? Okay, they're right and I'm wrong, okay? So what's a normal estradiol level? 
Your normal, your normal estradiol, estradiol is your estrogen that your own body makes. It's responsible for the breasts and the hips, okay? A normal estradiol was anywhere from 40 to 400 picograms per gram, okay, or picograms per milliliter. A sky high estradiol would be about 500 picograms per gram. And what's a picogram? A picogram is a thousand times smaller than a nanogram, okay? So a thousand picograms is one nanogram. So fi a sky high estradiol, 500 picograms per gram, is 0 0.5 parts per billion. Extremely small amounts is a sky high estradiol. So just to visualize this, what's one part per billion? Well, if you take an Olympic sized swimming pool, okay, and you spit a tenth of an ounce of spit into that Olympic sized swimming pool, that's one part per billion. So sky high estradiol is half a part per billion. So the take home message, what is going on here is humans operate at extremely minute amounts of hormones. Hormones are chemical messengers. They're not toxins. They're not mutagenic cancer. They're not allergy. Okay. And also progesterone can interact with these other hormones. Remember, a hormone is a chemical messenger. So here are the six outcomes of taking progesterone. And this is why progesterone doesn't work. Okay. First of all, if you buy any product from us and you get a recommended product sheet of safe products to use and you just use those products for two to three months and you completely eliminate xenoestrogens, you become normal. The PCOS goes away. The fibrocystic breast disease goes away. The ovarian cyst goes away. The PMS goes away. Okay? Many of the female diseases go away. You don't need to take progesterone. You completely eliminate these chemicals or herbs that act like estrogen, you, and you become more normal. Remember, these chemicals and, and herbs that act like estrogen, they're abnormal estrogens. They're weird estrogens, so they do weird things to your, to your body, like make breast cancer. Okay, second outcome. You take progesterone, natural progesterone, with weak xenoestrogens. Progesterone balances out the xenoestrogens, and you get better. You go, man, I'm going to take progesterone for the rest of my life. It feels great. I love it. Okay, best thing since sliced bread. I don't want to modify my lifestyle. Okay. Third, okay, you take natural progesterone with a strong xenoestrogen. Okay, progesterone wakes up these estrogen receptors and you get worse until you stop the progesterone. Okay, so what happens is every woman in America just about has chronic xenoestrogen exposure because these xenoestrogens are in everything of our modern day life. They're in lotions, shampoos, laundry detergent. And the body, to protect itself, shuts down its sensitivity to estrogen. But when you take progesterone, it wakes up the estrogen receptors, making it seem like you're getting even more estrogen. And now I get the calls like, hey, man, this progesterone sucks, right? It's your fault. It's making me worse. I hate you. I'm like, well, it's because whatever else you're putting on the skin, the progesterone is interacting with it. Okay, what are the next three outcomes of taking progesterone? You take progesterone with xenoestrogens, and now the progesterone works for the first two months and does not work, and you wonder if there's anything in the bottle. Okay, so this is typical. People say, hey, you know, I used this progesterone first, and now and it was working really great, and now the third bottle you shipped me is not working. You know, I, I'm using it and nothing's happening. Well, it's because your estrogen receptors are woken up from the progesterone. Sometimes it takes about two months for the progesterone to wake up those estrogen receptors. Okay, here's another response. You take progesterone with herbs that block progesterone. These are herbs that are classically used to cause miscarriage. These herbs block progesterone at the receptor level. So using progesterone has no effect at all. You wonder if there's anything in the bottle. Th these progesterone blocking herbs are listed in the booklet. Herbs like mint, aloe will block progesterone at the receptor level, making the progesterone impotent. The progesterone will do nothing. You will not feel anything. So I did have one lady, and she goes, man, I've been drinking this glass of aloe every morning. That's what I do. I'm using a progesterone. I don't feel anything. I said, well, aloe is traditionally used to cause miscarriage in certain cultures. I don't agree with it. Okay. But if you're taking aloe, it's going to block the progesterone, and it's as if the progesterone is not going to work because aloe is blocking progesterone from the progesterone receptor. Okay. That's how aloe does its work to create miscarriages. Blocks progesterone. The third one is, well, if you're a very heavy set woman and you're applying progesterone over the very thick layers of fat, the progesterone gets soaked into the subcutaneous fat, and then the absorption into the body will not be good. So we suggest to apply the progesterone on the inside of the arms and legs. And again, um, the Dr. Wright figured that out, and I'm just reporting on it. So what is the 
secret to applying progesterone and having it work. The key to successful progesterone use is, well, it takes two to three months for xenoestrogens and hormone disruptors to wash out of the body. And again, anything on the skin is 10 times the oral dose in potency. So the solution is to cut out xenoestrogens and hormone disruptors for two to three months, paying 10 times as much attention to what is put on the skin, and then use progesterone. So again, if you come to our website at clearwoman.com, and you um, buy any one of our products, you will get a list of recommended products to use that are free of xenoestrogens, and also a list of commonly seen xenoestrogens and hormone disruptors to avoid. And again, if you follow that purple sheet, which has all the safe recommended products to the T and to the letter, you won't even need progesterone. You'll just become well. So again, thank you for listening to me. This is Dr. Eckhart. I'm a medical doctor. I'm at clearwoman.com. Thank you for listening to my lecture. Please see us at clearwoman.com and watch all the three overview videos and also watch the six informational videos at the bottom of the video page. Thank you.